Well, you mentioned the uh, C word, Chateau Montalina. And of course, uh, that brings us to a major turning point in, uh, I guess, your life and in the life of California and perhaps in the life of wine in the world. So uh, given the fact that some of us are not planning to go see a certain movie that came out, whatever it did, I don't even need to mention its name, it begins with a B. Um, could you tell us what that was about and the impact it had on you, the uh, tasting of 19... 76 in Paris where a certain wine represented out of Chateau Montalina that you created ends up winning a competition. Can you tell us what that meant to you? I have to admit that when I came to Chateau Montalina it was just the walls. It was nothing else. This is the first time that I have received paper and a ruler and pencil to design winery inside the tanks, the barrels, the bottling line, the press, the everything else. And I came on 5th of May and I was supposed to crash in next September without any equipment. So it was very hard for me, but at the same time it was a challenge that I tried to meet that challenge and uh, successfully we did crash, the first crash, 72. And uh, then came 73 and uh, many awards start to come in from every wine that I have made there. I, was, I had behind me 47 years of experience with wine, and I was about 50 years old. Uh, I compiled scientific knowledge and practical experience and devotion, and uh, I felt that I might now, as being only me, responsible for this wine to do all my knowledge and my love, my passion into these vines. And so that first Johannes Borisling that came on the market was tasted in Los Angeles and came number one among Johannes Borisling tasted. Then came Chardonnay 72 and 73 in San Diego. Both of them outnumbered the three best French Chardonnays in blind tasting. Uh, and those wines was twice as expensive as these wines. Uh, I was very happy and I know that my past experience and love and passion has shown a result. So, and the next thing happened with the 73 Chardonnay on English, uh, uh, Mr. Harry Bois came to Chateau Montalina and 73 Chardonnay was in the barrel. So I took him by wine teeth the sample and put in his glass and he looked in the glass and smelled it, tasted it and, and looked at me. He said, Mike, believe me, I never tasted such a good Chardonnay ever in my life, even in France. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, 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 I told you. That is something. So that while that wine after that was bottled, it, it was marketed, and uh, people came from France to find some California wines to put in this bicentennial tasting, that Chardonnay was taken, and Zinfandel, which I have made, 73. But Zinfandel was not tasted because it was only Cabernet and Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. But I was still proud of my Zinfandel. Mm -hmm. uh, but Chardonnay scored more points than any out of 20 white or red wines, 132 points. And first, ne next to my points was 
Mr. Vinarski, Cabernet Sauvignon, mm -hmm. 126, six and a half points. And then came the French. Mm -hmm. So two Napa Valley wines scored the best points, the most points. And of course, that I didn't know anything about because uh, Mr. Barrett kept this thing separately from me. Uh, he was already jealous of me because of this result that I have received from the different award received for my wine. He wanted to be himself a, a person, a winemaker, uh, working in Los Angeles as a lawyer. Right. Uh, but uh, he uh, did not consider winemaker to be important. He considered himself important. And uh, so when I got a message from Paris, I was very happy. I remember I, I was dancing. <laughs> uh, I couldn't believe it, and especially that I didn't know really what happened. I get a telegram that our wine scored the best in, in Paris tasting, but then two days later, New York Times called me. They want to interview me. I said, are you sure that's me? Mm -hmm. So they came, three of them, took picture of me and interviewed me, and there I was in wine, New York Times. First time, I couldn't believe it. But I knew that I was able to make these wines, that through all this experience, and knowledge and passion that that has shown up. So that from then on is another story that I felt that now it's a time that my dream, which I have in Croatia, to come to America and make wine and have my own winery, I was born in my mind. And pretty soon, Mr. Hills had a vineyard and he wanted to make best wines in the world. But to make best wines in the world, he was searching for best winemaker. And then he came to me and proposed me a deal. And that's how Gergic Hills was born. Gergic and Hills. And yeah. It survived 32 years. And we start with zero. Now, after 32 years, we own five vineyards. It's 366 acres of the prime vineyards, winery, good distribution, and being uh, concentrated on the making only exceptional wines. We let other winemakers do other wines. <laughs> and I guess part of the magic is that you are an innovator, that you learn with your teachers and then become a teacher uh, in terms of the cold fermentation, in terms of malolactic, 